So um, welcome everybody, and uh, again, Second Samuel chapter three, and uh, let's pray before we start. Uh, Lord, we we uh, we thank you for your word. We thank you for um, how you teach us through your word. We thank you for uh, Pastor Mike who who uh, brings the word to us and does not apologize for it. Uh, but teaches the next verse, and and uh, we thank you for that. Uh, and uh, on Father's Day today, Lord, we also thank you for Mike's message uh, as as he encourages uh, men to lead, and and um, and and we just pray, Lord, that you would by your Spirit help us do that. And we just thank you in Jesus' name, Amen. Um, so this morning. Um, I am going to read a little bit of uh, uh, chapter three. I'm, I'm not going to read the whole the whole chapter because then I could just dismiss you um, after that because it would take that long. Okay, but but I'm going to read uh, some of it and get try to get through some of the names. Uh, Ishbosheth, right? How, we can do that a few times fast and. Uh, but here, but here we go. Um, verse 1, There was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. And David grew stronger and stronger, while the house of Saul became weaker and weaker. And, this, and sons were born to David at Hebron. His firstborn was Amnon of uh, Ahinoam of Jezreel. And the second was Chileab of Abigail, the widow of Nabal, of Carmel, and the third, Absalom, the son of Makkah, the daughter of Talmai, king of Jeshur. By the way, um, she was not Jewish, okay, and that may, may play a hand in, in really who Absalom is down the road. And the fourth, Adonai, the son of Hag Haggith, and the fifth, Sh uh, I'm not, I didn't practice this one, but anyway, you can see it in your work, uh, in your, in your uh, Bible there. The son of Abital, and the sixth, Ethereum uh, of Eglath, uh, David's wife. And these were born to David in Hebron. And while there was a war between the house of Saul and the house of David, Abner was making himself strong in the house of Saul. Verse 7. Now Saul had a concubine whose name was Rizpah, the daughter of Aiah, and Ishbosheth said to Abner, "Why have you gone into my father's concubine?" Then Abner was angry, was very angry over the words of Ishbosheth, and said, "Am I a dog's head of Judah? Uh, to this day." I keep showing steadfast love to the house of Saul, your father, to his brothers and to his friends, and have not given you into the hand of David, and yet you charge me today with a fault concerning a woman. God do so to Abner, and more so if I do not accomplish uh, for David what the Lord has sworn to him, to transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul and set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah from Dan to Beersheba. And Ishbosheth could not answer Abner another word because he feared him. And Abner sent messengers to David on his behalf, saying, To whom does the land belong? Make your covenant with me, and behold, my hand shall be with you to bring over all Israel to you. And he said, Good, I will make a covenant with you, but one thing I require of you, and that is that you shall not see my face unless the first and unless you first bring Michal, Saul's daughter, when you come to see my face. And then then David sent messengers to Ishbosheth, Saul's son, saying, Give me my wife Michal. For I have paid the bridal price of a hundred foreskins of the Philistines. And Ishbosheth sent and took her from her husband, Paltiel, the son of Laish. But her husband, 
went with her, weeping all the, uh, uh, weeping after her all the way to Brahim. Then Abner said to him, "Go, return," and he returned. And Abner conferred with the elders of Israel, saying, "For some time past you have been seeking David as as king over you. Now then." Bring it about, for the Lord has promised David, saying, By the hand of my servant David, I will save my people, Israel, from the hand of the Philistines and from the hand of all their enemies. And Abner also spoke to Benjamin. And then Abner went to tell David at Hebron all that Israel and the whole house of Benjamin thought good to do. Then Abner came with 20 of uh, 20 men of David, excuse me, then Abner came with 20 men to David at Hebron. And David made a feast for Abner and the men who were with him. And Abner said to David, I will arise and go and will gather all Israel to my Lord the, the king, and they may make a covenant, and they may make a covenant with you, and that you may reign over. Uh, all that your heart desires. And so David sent Abner away and he went in peace. I'm going to stop there. Um, so there's a lot going on here. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, uh, of uh, what it says uh, that... Uh, you know, there's nothing new under the sun, right? There's nothing new. I mean, uh, uh, we think that we have to go watch uh, Netflix or some program to find uh, uh, intrigue and 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 uh, good guys and bad guys and uh, um, war and 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 uh, sex and the whole thing. It's all the it's all here in in this story. I mean, this is, is violent and, uh, and, uh, but interesting, nothing new under, you know, we thought our culture was out there on the edge, right? Uh, this is, this is, uh, is very interesting. And, and, and what we have here is a civil war, right? And it, I think it would be good for us to, to reconnect with the characters and the players and, and who's on whose team. And, how they're related, you know. It's it's like oh, here we're reading all these names, you know, uh, and uh, <clears throat> you know I'm going to throw out Abishai, right? And whose side is Abishai on? Do do we need to look that up? Abishai. I think we need a scorecard. Uh, they they're not wearing. We can't see their uniforms, right? Okay, and uh, so so here we go. We have two teams. We have the house of Saul, right, in the Civil War, and we have the house of David. And when we look at these teams initially, um, we have the, uh, the New York Yankees versus the Kansas City Royals. That's how, that's how evenly matched they are, okay? Uh, that, that the house of Saul initially in the Civil War is very strong. They control 11 <clears throat> loosely connected tribes. <clears throat> and, and basically, <clears throat> they are the team. They are the team from the north. And the house of David <clears throat> controls one tribe, and they are the small team, okay, in the south. That, that's the way this starts. And uh, consider this, that um, <clears throat> Abner, and Abner is the, maybe the main character we're going to deal with today, just some insight into Abner. Uh, but uh, Abner is, is the commander okay, of the army of the Yankees, of the, the team of the North, the strong team. He, he has the, 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 whole, the, the army of Israel, which was fortified by by all of the the fighting men that Saul had accumulated over the over the time he was king, right? And and um, and so um, he controls this this army, and uh, 
and a little bit about Abner here. Uh, but not only was he the general and the commander, but he was also a, a brave warrior and a superior uh, fighter himself. I mean, this, he was skilled in war. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, also on this team <clears throat> was the owner of the team, okay, Ishbosheth. Okay, he was the king. And, and as we read through this, you've discovered that uh, really uh, Abner is controlling, is running the program. And Ishbosheth is just there. And, you know, as I'm studying this and I'm looking back and I've listened to last week's uh, message, right? And, and, and uh, <clears throat> you know, it's funny. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, at the battle of Gilboa, you know, where, where the Philistines routed the Israelites and Saul and Jonathan were both killed. You, that was just a few chapters ago, right? Uh, and... And Saul had a couple of other sons, right? Besides Jonathan, they're on the north team. Uh, and there really were no teams back then, right? Uh, they both died. But I, I've never heard of this guy, Ishbosheth. Where did, did he miss the battle? Uh, what was what was up with him? Uh, all of a sudden, he just shows up. Uh, uh, I don't think this guy went to war. I don't think he was there. Uh, just wasn't his thing. He is no, this guy is no Jonathan. Okay, I mean, again, if I have, if I have one, I mean, you know, do you ever watch a program on TV? Do you ever watch a program? And, you know, like Elise and I, we'll, sometimes we'll get into these things where we'll watch a series on TV and eventually we'll, we'll kind of, you know, uh, set it aside because we go who are the good guys okay we're we're looking is there one decent person in this whole movie they're they're so they're all evil i'm thinking how do you have a movie with all bad guys okay and uh, you know uh in in our office at work uh i think i joked with with philip uh you know uh, we had a new general agent come in and he had a right hand man when he came in and and uh, the right hand guy was he played the tough guy with everybody right and and the general agent who was the senior person in our office um you know uh anyway it was a weird team and i i remember going into the general agent's office one day and and the new guy he's a little younger than i am and <clears throat> and i just decided i would treat him like a peer and uh and I went into his office and I, I said to him, Andrew, I said, you know, you have a weird operation going on here. And uh, he says, oh, really? Uh, I said, yeah, I mean, I've heard of good cop, bad cop, right? But you guys are doing bad cop and bad cop. I, I don't know how that works. But, uh, and so here we've got a bunch of players and uh, two of them here on the north. Uh, now in the house of David, we have, we have, a couple of other people, and oh, and I'm, I may, uh, I'm going to come back and mention the women involved, okay, because there's women here, okay, important, uh, but on the south, the house of David, we have, we have David, and then we have his general, his commander, Joab, okay, interesting, as we look at the players, um, it's, it's important to realize that they're related, Okay, so let's go back to the to the north, the the the, the house of Saul. But uh, you will find that that uh, uh, Saul uh, is uh, is related to Abner, and you know the the scriptures. There there's some there's a little disagreement between Chronicles and First Samuel, but but um, we think that that. Uh, that Abner is Saul's uncle, okay? Um, and uh, it's possible it could be his first cousin, but that, that's what we think. And, uh, but, but there's a blood tie between the king and the commander of the military, all right? And, uh, and I think that's pretty safe for, for, for both. And then in, in the house of David, we've got King David 
but we've got Joab. Joab is related to David, uh, David's sister. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember, you know, in, in the scripture, it doesn't tell me where the, the sisters came. It, we just know David was the youngest of the males, right? And he was chosen and, and you know, after Samuel came and looked at all, they said, well, there is one more, but, and he was anointed. He was just young at that time. It's possible his sisters were older. It's possible. But uh, Joab and uh, his brothers were the, the sons of David's sister. So they're first cousins. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I have a first cousin that I'm as close to as a brother. I, I may have a first cousin that's closer to me than my brothers. Okay? Um, so this, this relationship can be very, very tight. Okay? It may explain what happens later on in chapter 3 about why David doesn't deal more severely with Joab for killing Abner. Right? We, this, this happens later in the chapter. But if you understood the, the relationship between the players, you go, oh, maybe, and you know, some commentators have said, well, David showed weakness there. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure he showed weakness there, okay? So let's, let's, let's go to the text and look at the text now. And, uh, um, and, I, and as we, we start here, there, there was a, it says a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. Now, we don't know how long this war was, but we can assume that, that the conflict was easily as long as the reign of Ishbosheth, which was two years. Okay, it it might have been longer. For example, this conflict may have arisen even before uh, Abner decided to prop up and put Ishbosheth up as the king. Okay, um, and uh, and we'll get into that a little bit. And it says, uh, and it says the house uh, of David. Uh, uh, grew stronger and stronger while the house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. What is the, what do you think the evidence is that the house of Saul was growing weaker and the house of David was growing stronger? They, I think they do give us some evidence of that. What, what do you think? Well, yeah. So <clears throat> when you've got a king who's really not the king, okay, uh, who's a little intimidated, very intimidated as a matter of fact, so there's some conflict between the number one and the number two, right? And there's also some confusion on who's number one and who's number two. This is not, uh, no, we're not seeing strong leadership here in, in the north. Anything else that would lead you to think that one house is growing stronger and one is growing weaker. David handed his uh, wife, Michal, back, and that was a big, big deal. It was a big deal. It was a big deal. Um, you know, the, the, the other thing prior to that, Mark, and I think that's, that's, that's obviously evidence that, that he is, is stronger. He makes this demand, and we'll get to that. But, yes, George. No, as a matter of fact, he, he, Abner says, I'm going to give you what, you what you've been talking about and wanting, which was David to, to rule over you. Do, you. do you remember that in the, yeah. In the text? Yeah, so... Maybe the, maybe the biggest reason is, uh, is that Saul's dead. And, and God has promised David the king. He's going to know it's going to happen. You know, there, that's really the, the, the unspoken uh, thread that runs throughout this whole thing is that right there, okay? And, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tap on that symbol pretty hard as we go through. I like it. You know, here's something else though that, uh, that as Christians we wouldn't necessarily look at, but um, I don't see Ishboth Seth um, with, uh, talk about his wives and his children. I don't see any, that his personal house is growing. But, 
it goes, but it makes a, a very strong point to talk about the sons of David that were born in Hebron. Now, we know he was in Hebron for six years, okay? Six or seven years, I think. And so, and, and we wouldn't say, oh, this is a good thing that he's got many wives. No, we, we're, not, we're not going there. But um, the scripture leads us right to that and it says, but the house of David was growing stronger and the evidence to that, okay, or another footnote to that was look at what's happening within his own household, right? And, and I'm thinking, you know, I, I guess I just didn't remember. I knew David, you know, uh, had Bathsheba. I knew he had these two wives that he brought to Hebron, right, before. But I didn't know, I mean, or I forgot that he picked up four more while he was there. Okay, and had children by them. Um, this does not turn out well for David in the long run. By the way, okay, this is not this is this is not a good thing. And and you know I wrote and I was thinking about this. I and I wrote down. Let's see if I can find it here. But go to Deuteronomy seventeen fourteen. Just flip. Let's flip over there. Somebody can find it for me. Um, I've already read enough today, right? Um, Deuteronomy 17, 14. David had to know this, by the way. <laughs> I'm thinking, didn't he know this? Um, somebody find it? When you come to the land that the Lord your God has given you, and you possess it and dwell in it, and then say, I will set a king over me, like all the nations that are around me. You may indeed set a king over you, God will choose one from among your brothers who you shall set as king over you. You may not put a foreigner over you who is not your brother. Only he must not acquire many horses for himself or cause the people to return to Egypt in order to acquire many horses. Since the Lord has said to you, you shall never return that way again. And he shall not acquire many wives for himself, lest his heart turn away, nor shall he acquire for himself excessive silver and gold. Interesting. Oh, well, th did David not know this? Okay. But he's serious about the whole wives program. And, and not only that, now he, uh, by my count, okay, in, in Hebron, by the time that Abner sends him this note. He's got six wives. Am I counting right? Six. Was it Michal? Well, seven, but he doesn't have McCall. She was taken away from him. So I'm thinking six is good. It's, you know, it's, a, it's an even number. I would go with that. Um, not enough, I guess. I like the odd number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. The odd numbers are good. Well, you know, it's interesting you should say that because as an older man, you realize one is enough. Okay? Okay? As a younger man, you might think three or four is a good call. Okay? But, but, but as you get older, you go, no, that's not a good call. One is good. I can't even handle one. Okay? Uh, I'm having trouble leading my household with one. Okay? Uh, can you imagine? Um, and so, um, and so we're moving on here in the, in the, uh, in this, and we get through these six wives and I'm thinking, okay. And while, uh, there was a war, okay. There was war between the house of Saul and the house of David. Abner was making himself, uh, strong in the house of Saul. And, and so we come to this situation where Abner, uh, is making himself strong and Ishbosheth, okay, he acts totally out of character. Now this is a guy who is afraid of his own shadow. Okay, this is this is not your this is not your leader. This is I can't believe it's Jonathan's brother. Okay, uh, but he is, and uh, he somehow works up the courage. Okay, to go to his uncle Abner. And call him out, okay, about 
um, sleeping with uh, his father's concubine. So this is one of the females that uh, is in the story. On, on the north, we have two females, right, that are mentioned, Rizpah and Michal, okay? But here, Ishbosheth decides that he's going to go and say, what is up with that? Now, if you're just reading through this, you're thinking, holy, maybe this Ishbosheth is a very, he's, he's a mild mannered, but a very moral and straight laced, upright guy. I mean, we don't hear about his wives or his many wives or anything about his, you know, how he handles himself, right? But if you were reading it that way, you would be reading it wrong. He doesn't care a rip about what's moral or whether Abner has, you know, five concubines. He doesn't care. What he does care about is what Abner's doing. And by taking his father's concubine, he is saying, I'm in charge. I'm running all the pro. I am taking over for Saul. And I'm I'm taking his con. You, do you remember? Well, you will know. You'll know when we get into Second uh, Samuel. Okay, Ab, does Absalom not do the same thing, and he does it publicly? It's not that he has a desire for all these women. I. It's not that was not the Absalom was very handsome. He could have had other women. Okay, it wasn't that he took those concubines to show that he's putting it in his father's face and he is now in charge that that's the that's why they do that okay and so it was a it was a political and a a power move to do that and Ishbosheth calls him out and of course it doesn't last long this discussion okay uh and and it's interesting and Abner flips out over this he is he is not happy that he's being called out. And, um, and then he, he goes to proclaim his innocence. He goes to great lengths to, to, to give every example how he has supported the house of Saul and protected everybody. And you're calling me out because of this woman? Seriously? Well, they both knew why he was getting called out. It wasn't because of some woman. It was because of what he did in trying to usurp the position of authority, okay? And we find out here, okay, um, as, as we go down, okay, that uh, uh, in verse nine, and so it says, God do so to Abner and more also, if I do not accomplish for David what the Lord has sworn to him to transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul and set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah. He just, he called, all of a sudden, this guy who's so loyal to Saul, right? And the commander of the army, he decides he's switching sides. He's gonna switch sides. It, just like this. And Ishbosheth has nothing to, this guy is, is this, is this weakness personified? We, we, have, we have two men in here. This is on Father's Day, right? So we're, we're going to have some, some men that we would look at it as role models here, right? And, and, and neither one, uh, Ishbosheth is not the guy that we, we would like our sons to be like. Nor is the other male, Paltiel, who is the second husband of Michal. That guy is a weak sister, okay? Okay. Sir, why didn't he take a stand and say, no, you're not taking my wife and died on the doorstep? No. He goes, seriously. I, I mean, some of these guys, I'm just not, I'm, you know, I'm a Jonathan fan, but I, you know, these two guys, I'm just, I just can't handle. And uh, so, so what happens here, and it's very, it's very interesting. We're going to get back into sales today. I know uh, we talked about sales before. I, I can't help it. Nothing happens until a sale is made. All right. And, uh, and so uh, Abner calls out, I'm switching sides. Okay. And, uh, but what's interesting here, and, and uh, I, I want to just pause on this a little bit and think about it. 
Abner verbalizes that he knew all along that David was the heir to the throne. This is no secret. But he puts up Ishbosheth in, in against what he knows is the will of God. That that's a, that's a smart move right there. That's brilliant. Okay? That you know what the will of God is, he knows very well. Now, and you say, well, how does he know that? How does he know that? Well, let's go back and we again, let's connect the players. But go back and flip with me, if you will, to 1 Samuel 24, okay? Verse 16, and we're going to the, to the bathroom incident, okay? You, you, know, you recall what that is. All, if, if we had a bunch of uh, uh, Awana boys, uh, fifth and sixth grade boys, and I would mention the bathroom incident, I would have everybody's attention, okay? Uh, they would all know this, okay? But, uh, and so this is where David cuts off a piece of, Saul's robe, right? And uh, verse 16, 24, I'm flipping to it. It just takes me a minute here. It's always harder when you're in front of a group. Um, 16, um, and verse 16, and as soon as David had finished speaking these words to Saul, Saul said, uh, is this your voice, my, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. And he said to David, you are more righteous than I, for you have repaid me good, whereas I have repaid you evil. And uh, he goes on, he says, and, and uh, you have uh, declared this day, um, you have dealt well with me, and, and, uh, and you did not kill me uh, when the Lord put me into your hands. And he goes on, and, and, he, and he finally says here, he says, uh, uh, in verse 20, and behold, I know that you shall surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel will be established in you, uh, in your hand. Then he goes on, interesting, in verse 21, and he says, swear to me, therefore, by the Lord, that you will not cut off my offspring after me and that you will not destroy my name out of my father's house. And David swore this to Saul. And so, now, let's connect the dots. But Abner was right there. Abner was right at the side of Saul this whole time. Now, Abner's not called out here, okay? But we know some things from the past. For example, remember this back in 1 Samuel. And again, I, to know the relationship between the players is to understand what happens in this chapter, right? But remember back in uh, in chap in, in 1 Samuel when uh, David went missing from the dinner table. Remember that? And and I and I'm kind of replaying this in my mind as I'm as I'm studying this and I'm thinking and and Jonathan has that confrontation with his father and he defends David, remember? Uh that, how powerful was that? And uh um but at, in that passage, it gives the dinner table arrangements that happened every night there. And the dinner table arrangements were this. There were no women present. There were no women. It was on one side with Saul's back against the wall with Abner seated next to him. And across from him was Jonathan and David. That's who had dinner together every night. Do you think David knows Abner? Knows him very well. Okay? Uh, and Jonathan is no Ishbosheth. And when confronted by his father, the king, he stands up to him and dodges a spear and then walks out of that meeting mad. That's, that's Jonathan. Okay? That's a leader. Okay? Uh, but Ishbosheth, we're going to go back here to uh, chapter 3 of 2 Samuel, doesn't stand up to his own commander, okay? He caves in, all right? Um, and, uh, 
And then what happens, we have a negotiation here. We have a sale to be made, okay? And, uh, and so Abner does this. He sends messengers to David saying, now listen to this question. This is interesting. To whom does the land belong? Well, you could answer that a couple of different ways. He's talking about the land in the north, by the way, right? The, where he controls the army. Is he saying, to whom does the land belong? Like David, the Lord has promised you to rule over the kingdom, the whole kingdom, Judah and Israel. To whom does the land belong? Obviously, to you. Or is he saying, to whom does the land belong? In other words, I am the kingmaker and I control this land. And so he doesn't come out and say it, it, it's mine, I control it, and I'll give it to whomever I think is best. He doesn't, he doesn't quite, but what does he mean? And David could take it either way, right? And uh, so it's a, it's a very ambiguous question. And, but then listen to how he goes on, okay? I, I'm, I'm thinking that he's thinking it belongs to him. Listen to what he says after this. He says, uh, make your covenant with me and behold, my hand shall be uh, with you. In other words, make your covenant with me and behold, my hand, okay, shall be with you to bring over all of Israel to you. And 13, and David responds, and David's not there. Remember, this is messengers, but he responds and he says, uh, he, it doesn't sound like he thought about this much. He says, good, I will make a covenant with you. Now, you know, when we do a, when we make a covenant, when we make a sale, okay, if we're selling something, there is, there is a strategy, an art of negotiation, okay? And there's some things like, for example, the buyer or the seller, the buyer or the seller could choose to be the first to set the price. And in negotiations, that's called, there's a name for that, it's called pegging. So you can peg a price, but you, you must be careful if you're the seller and you peg early, right? Uh, or if you're the buyer and you decide you're the one that's gonna leap out and peg the price. Think about this, so for example, if you're the seller and you peg, and you say, well, you know, this apartment building that I'm gonna sell, I, I think it's worth two million. The buyer responds, hmm, how about a million nine? Oh, if you've done that, if that happens, the seller has just controlled the sale. In other words, he's pegged and the buyer responded to the peg by just moving to the south a little bit. You see, you see the peg? He, the other response, if, you, if, if you're gonna be in control, the other response is to start laughing, is to get, just laugh and go, oh, how about I give you 500,000? <laughs> 500. What that means is your peg is completely foolish. I'm, uh, we don't have, we don't, th this is nothing. And then you establish a peg. All right, so pegging is important. And Abner pegs, he pegs first. Did you notice that? Um, and he says, I will turn over the whole kingdom to you. David is a master. I mean, the, the David is no, he, he's no slouch, I'm just telling you. Look at what happens, okay? David blows him away in this, okay? And, 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 and you need to just look between the lines to see, I think, but this is my take. Uh, and David says, good, I will make a covenant with you. But one thing I require is this. He repegs. He, he doesn't even address the kingdom in the north. That's not his issue. He goes, no, 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 no. I want my wife back. And if you don't show up with her, uh, I'm not, you're not even going to see my face. How's that sound? Hmm. Is that or is did did he just laugh at his peg? 
He ignored what? It. Huh? He ignored it. Oh, he gets even. He even puts Abner further in his place. This is, and again, if you're not out there doing battle, uh, you know, in in the world today, and and in making a sale or doing negotiations or whatever, maybe this goes by you, but but I'm thinking not. Uh, look here, and then what David does is, and. and and we'll read on in the story here, but it says, good, I will make a covenant with you. And he tells him about his wife. And he says, and when you, and he says, David, then the very next verse, look at verse 14. David sent messengers to Ishbosheth. Well, hold it. Why is he sending messengers to Ishbosheth, Saul's son, saying, give me my wife, Michal, for I have paid the bridal price of a hundred foreskins of the Philistines. Hold it. He completely ignores Abner. He just blows right by him, goes to his boss, and responds. That's a put down. That's putting Abner in his place. In other words, Ab what he's saying is, Abner, you are not the king. You think you're the kingmaker. You're not the kingmaker. Okay? Now, in the world, in the real world, you would think Abner does have a ton of influence in this, right? He's the, he's the commander of the most powerful army between the civil, in the Civil War. Agreed? You would think this guy has some leverage. But uh, I want to remind you, uh, you know, Mark pointed out the thread that's running through this, okay? Remember I said Abner decided that he would, knowing the will of the Lord, ignore it. Think about us today. Do we know the Lord's will on some things and then we willfully choose to ignore it? We just go, you know, he, he'll he forgive me for this or it's not that important. Or, or maybe you do like the young kids do, which is you put a cover over your head and think that the Lord doesn't see you. Right? You're just not there anymore because you put the blanket over your head. I think we do that. But he ignores the will of the Lord. He knows the will. He admitted he knows the will. Here's something else to reflect on. Uh, again, between the relationship between Abner and David, I just think this is a fascinating negotiation. And, and a, uh, uh, but some of the backstory, consider this. After the bathroom incident, right, in chapter 24, I think it's in chapter 26 where David sneaks down the hill while Abner and Saul are asleep, right? The whole army is asleep and he takes his spear and his water jar. Do you remember this one? Then he goes back up to the top of the hill and he says, hello, hello, uh, I, I don't want to wake you all up, but uh, Abner, and, and let's find that. Let's just find that because uh, David calls him out. It's, it's very interesting. I think it's in 26. Uh, maybe somebody can find it for me. Uh, let me go back. But I'd love, I'd, I kind of like David just puts it in Abner's face, okay? Uh, and uh, yeah, it's in, it's in uh, 26, 17. And Saul recognized... Uh, David's voice and said, uh, is this your voice, my son, David? And David said, it is my voice, my Lord, O king. And he said, and why does my Lord pursue after his servant for what I have done? Uh, ba, ba, ba. And he goes on and he says, uh, 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 maybe it was, before, was it before that? Was it before that in 14? Thank you. I need help. Okay, and David called out uh, to the army uh, and to Abner, the son of Nur, saying, will you not answer, Abner? And then Abner answered, who, who are you who calls out to the king? And David said to Abner, are you not a man? Who is like you in Israel? He's complimenting. Who is a warrior like you in Israel? Okay. Why have you uh, not kept watch over your... Uh, your Lord, the king, calls him out for not doing his job, right? Uh, for one of the people came in to destroy the king, your Lord. 
This thing you have done is not good. And as the Lord lives, you deserve to die. He just calls him out and says, you deserve to die in front of all of his troops and the king. Is David intimidated by Abner? Not in the, not in the least. This is, this is the backstory to this negotiation. And David decides to just blow him off, respond to Ishbosheth that he knows is a weak sister, right? He knows this. Ishbosheth caves in, and not only does he cave in, he delivers Michal. He sends off his general with Michal to David. I don't think that's a good move, personally. I just don't think that's a, a strong move for your wealth, future welfare. Okay? You, he doesn't even counter, right? David says, do this. He just does it. Uh, doesn't say, you know, I'll trade you. Uh, no. The guy is, is weak. Okay? And, and so we come down. And um, I'm going to come back to uh, chapter 3 here. And, and I just want to uh, hit on this a little bit here before, maybe before we end. But if we all know and we, we know the will of the Lord, we know what is right, we know what the Lord's will is, um, is it wise for us to go against it? You know, this is a lesson we can learn today, right? You go, okay, what am I learning from something that happened a thousand years before Christ, right? Why, what, why are we spending our time? Well, one of the things is, is that uh, we ought to know that if the Lord's will is thus and so, we should follow it. And we, and we shouldn't deviate. We shouldn't go left or right. We should just do that, right? And, uh, you know, um, and to defy the Lord, the power of the Lord. I mean, how did it go for Pharaoh in his negotiations with Moses? How did that work out? It didn't work. It didn't work out so good. How did it work out? I'm, I was just thinking of another. How did it work out for the Pharisees? Okay, when they arrested Peter and John. And and I and I thought it was amazing. You know, in Acts five, uh, Gamaliel gives counsel to the other elders, the other Jewish elders and Pharisees, and this is wise counsel. Okay, but do you remember the counsel he gave? He said, he said, uh, he said, take care what, you do, what you're about to do with these men. Take care. He says, uh, and he gave him two examples of, of men who were, were leading uh, revolts, you know, that both failed because they weren't of the Lord, even though they had men. They just, once the leader was killed, the, the revolt stopped. He gave him two examples. And, but, and he says, but if this is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. Interesting. In this case, the Pharisees listened. Because one of their own was, was thinking rightly. He understood to oppose the Lord is not, that is not a good side to be on. Okay. And, and, we, and the Lord hasn't changed. We should learn that. Um, and I'm not sure that, that I'm learning that or I've completely learned it. But what I am discovering is this, as I look at this scenario. Abner nor Saul trusted in the power of the Lord. They were always trying to work things out for themselves. And as I read this, I don't see David ever attacking the house of Saul. Huh? Do you see that anywhere in here? David is just, he is good. He is not, he wasn't going to kill Saul, was he? He, he, it was hands off. He was going to let the Lord take care of that, right? We're convinced of that. He had nothing to do with Saul's death. And David is perfectly content to stay home, to stay in Hebron and let the Lord work out his program. It's been six years he was in Hebron, okay? He's, but I don't see where he's attacked. Now, I, there was the, in chapter two, you know, last week we covered about the conflict between the, the, the 20, wasn't it 20, uh, 20, yes, right, 24, thank you. Uh, and it ended up in a battle, but Abner instigated that. 
Joab just kind of went along with it, and, and Joab's forces prevailed in that, and they end up chasing down Abner. Now, you know, the deal is Abner ends up killing uh, Abishai in that case, right? But uh, who is Joab's brother, right? Remember, we're trying to connect the, the team members here. But is that something that needed revenge? It was, it was in a battle. It was in, a, in war, and, and Abner told him, stand down. You don't need to do this. So he warned him. I don't think there was any revenge needed here, but consider this as we get into the last part of chapter 3. Uh, Joab is not going to leave this to the Lord. He's no better than, than Abner. Matter of fact, I think if we look at, at Joab, he's worse than Abner because he murders Abner. Okay? Um, and uh, we, can't, we can't say that maybe Joab murdered him. You know, again, this is the last half of chapter 3. We can't say that he murdered him because of his faithfulness to David. No. No, no. Uh, he had revenge on his mind, number one. But number two, and maybe more importantly, he was concerned about his position as commander of David's army. I mean, think about it. Abner, who was senior to him in, in all respects, okay, as the commander and, and seated at Saul's table. Well, Joab wasn't seated at Saul's table. David was, right? Uh I think Joab is feeling a little intimidated here and realizing, hey, if Abner comes over and makes the switch, where am I going to be? Hmm, this isn't, I don't like, I don't like David talking to Abner. This is not, this doesn't work for my program. So we got that going on, okay? Um, but uh, for today, the last part of this, what I'm convinced of is that Saul, Abner, Joab, these characters were not trusting in the Lord. But David, this is interesting. David, he's not attacking uh, the house of Saul. He wasn't attacking Saul when he was king. He is resting in the sovereignty of the Lord. And the, he was anointed. He was going to let the Lord bring this about in his own timing, and he was not going to make it happen. And, uh, and you know, it's interesting, this confidence in, in the sovereignty of the Lord um, is, is really amazing. And maybe that's why uh, David displays some of the characteristics of the future king, of Jesus. In other words, he's a type of Christ, is he not, as king? He's a type and we see this type of Christ as he deals easily with Abner in these negotiations. He deals easily with them, right? He outsmarts him totally, okay? But we also see the gentleness and the mercy of Christ in how he doesn't have Joab executed. He's, he's uh, I don't think it shows weakness. I think he's... He's family, obviously, but uh, he, if, if, as you, as for your homework, if you read the last part, you'll see that he totally embarrasses Joab and puts him in front of the funeral procession of Abner, the man he killed, to mock him in front of all the people. But he doesn't have him executed. So let's finish there. Um, and, uh, and maybe we'll, we'll get a chance to pick up the back half of chapter 3 some other time. Lord, we thank you for this. Uh, it is very insightful into, into our human nature and how we sometimes uh, will look like Abner or Joab in how we deal with things of life, trying to control them, where we may forget to rest in your sovereignty and to follow, not, you know, just follow after you and and, uh, and what we know is true. Um, and so we just pray, Lord, that you will give us strength to do that. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.